Are there any books in William Branham's library which say Eve was designed by the devil? Yeah, Charles, that is definitely a question for you. You're the one with the library. I'm the one that has guitars in my background. <clears throat> so definitely one for you. But to give some background on the question itself, this comes from the marriage and divorce sermon that we previously examined. William Branham gives this very evil statement that Satan and Jesus were co-equal. He used the word co-equal. And he said that during the creation, William Branham's twisted version of the creation story was that Eve was designed by the devil purposefully to deceive the man. And you have the book, so I'll let you answer the actual question. But there is one interesting tidbit that I'll give that thoroughly shocked me whenever I first began to deprogram and get into actual Bible study. And it's learning the phraseology of the King's, the King James Version of the Bible, learning how words change their meaning over time. It's not that it's right or wrong. It's at the time it was written, the language was slightly different. And you can, you can look these up, you know, words that have shifted over time, especially from the date in which the King James Version was written. But one of the words that has slightly changed is the word rib. The Bible says that male and female created he, God, them, Adam and Eve, and they were created as one. And then in the King James Version, it said God took a, <laughs> the rib and created Eve. The common unstudied version of this in Christianity, which wasn't centralized to William Branham, but to Christians in general, was that it was God reaching in and grabbing an actual bone, and from that bone created the woman. And that's where William Branham got this false notion that she was the lesser creature because it was just, <laughs> it was the bone, right? But the Bible says, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. The word rib meant the same thing as side. And you can find this if you go back and read some of the old books where it's talking about the side of a hill, for example. It would say the rib of a hill, and it's talking about a side of something. And if you understand what it truly is saying in the ancient languages, it means that there was a single being that split into two beings, and that was Adam and Eve. And from there... It's <laughs> There's different schools of theology on the status of women, which I'm not going to get into that at all. But from its inception, God designed Adam and Eve, and it said male and female created he, God, created he, them, this being. And then they split into two. And from there, I'll let you pick up, because where William Branham went with it is so anti-biblical that there's not a word that describes how evil this was. Right. Uh, it, it is so strange what William Branham did with this. But yeah, basically he taught in that sermon that women were designed by the devil. And that was a thus saith the Lord sermon that he said he got in a supernatural experience when he was up in a mountain shortly before he preached it. And so, of course, the, some people believe that was, you know, some great new revelation. So the question here is, um, was that in one of William Branham's library books, or was this really some great revelation um, that he received from from God? Which, of course, all you got to do is go read the account in Genesis and, and realize Eve was not designed by the devil, and that just tears all that apart. But as far as um, where it could have came from, so there are in William Branham's possession were several of uh, the books of the Apocrypha. We know for sure William Branham did have access to that because he actually read direct quotes out of some of those books of the Apocrypha at times in his sermons. So um, I think the most obvious one is that he um, he read at times out of the book of Enoch, for example. Um, and so he he made multiple times he would quote out of the book of Enoch in his sermon. So we, we know for sure he did have the books of the Apocrypha. And one of the... Um, books of the Apocrypha uh, is called The Origin of the World, 
And in that book, Eve was created by evil forces. And uh, that basic premise that Eve was created by evil forces can be found in a number of different Gnostic writing. Um, and, of course, that is all heresy, right? Gnosticism was the very first heresy in the church, and it was condemned by um, the Apostle John in the Bible itself. And so for William Branham to incorporate ideas that had been debunked by the Apostle John and by, you know, Irenaeus and the first generation of church fathers is is really problematic. But, yeah, it, it's possible he got those ideas out of the... Um, Gnostic Apocrypha, or at least the general concept of it. And we know that um, William Branham also is descended from British Israelite ideology as well, right? And we know that some of the early British Israelite um, prophetesses um, and some of the early British Israelite leaders going back to the late 1700s and into the 18, early 1800s, they themselves actually were directly incorporating Gnosticism purposefully. They had got a hold of some of these books of Apocrypha and were directly incorporating Gnostic ideas into some of um, their British Israel ideas. And so you, you actually have a, a stream of Gnosticism that comes into British Israelism through that route, directly through the Apocrypha, through those prophetesses. And it's possible that William Branham picked some of this up through you know, just the other people who believe some of this stuff among the British Israel crowd, um, and, and may have not even realized it was not, you know, Gnostic Apocrypha, because of course none of them are saying, hey, I'm teaching you Gnosticism. <laughs> They're saying, hey, I'm teaching you this great revelation, which uh, someone secretly copied out of a Gnostic book, you know, a hundred years ago. So it's it's really, um, really unfortunate stuff. Yeah, it's it's an interesting study, and for anybody who's able to do this, not everybody is able, but for those who are able, I highly recommend reading Irenaeus's Against Heresies, and not just reading the book, because it's a very challenging read, but you, as you read the book, also read and understand the cultures that he's talking about, the time periods that he's talking about, the religious belief systems that he's talking about, and not just for William Branham's message cult, but for many similar cults that developed from the Latter Rain movement, you're going to find that Against Heresies <laughs> identifies almost every secret knowledge, secret mystery that they bring you, because that's, that's what it was. It was heresy. It was introduced into the church, and these men... Whether they read it and they're copying directly or they heard it from other sources that were copying, they're basically just regurgitating Gnosticism and they're putting it into new and twisted different ideas that <clears throat> match today's time. And if Irenaeus were to stand up today and write another book, <laughs> he would identify all of these cults and say, that's a heresy, that's a heresy, that's a heresy. And it matches this book of heresy that I wrote back in the ancient world, right? So it's, it's a fascinating study. Not everybody can do it because it is very time consuming. I did it as a, as a means to try to understand what, what I was in and the framework of how it created and morphed into the cult that existed, I started this like 2013, and it, it took a long time to go through it. 